So today I'm with the Yorkshire Thoroughbred, Thoroughbred Classic Car Club at the Netherton Sports and Social Club um, near Wakefield in West Yorkshire. So it's a fairly small classic car show but there's a really nice variety of vehicles here today. Um, so we're going to have a bit of a tour around, take a closer look at some of the cars that are, that are here today on site. Some I have seen before at other shows previously but uh, also there's quite a few interesting cars here that that I've not seen before, like uh, a Cortina with an arm sticking out of the back. I haven't seen one of those for ages, the arm that is, not the Cortina. Or uh, things like this 1997 Mark 1 Renault Laguna, another rare sight these days. So without further ado, I'll uh, change the camera angle and we'll have a look around and see what we've got. Right, so we'll start off with this Austin Allegro. Uh, but this one might have been rather special because it is a Vanden Pla, which means we've got this posh uh, radiator grille that looks very Rolls Royce. And the real change is when you get inside because we've got wood and leather and of course these tray tables as well. Maybe they were a little ahead of the curve with this because a lot of manufacturers now are selling us smaller cars with um, premium features. Next to that we have a Volkswagen Beetle, but no ordinary Beetle because this one has had its roof chopped off. I don't really know Beetles very much, I would presume this is probably a, a later model. And of course we've got my car that I've came in today, the uh, Megang 1.6e Fiji 1997. Part next to a Jaguar XJ6. I've been speaking to the owner. I believe he said it was a 2006 model. Uh, really, really nice looking car. Now, the car I was quite excited to see when I pulled in this morning is this 97 Laguna. So it's the same year as my car. Uh, very similar mileage as well. But the owner has had this car from being brand new. It's a uh, 1.8 engine. Um, I believe in RT spec. So fairly uh, middle of the range, but the car is in uh, really, really nice condition. And, uh, yeah. and it's got a few nice little accessories as well, like, for example, front fog lamps from the dealer. Uh, and the owner has had, I was speaking to, he's had quite a few Renaults over the years. So um, yeah, he's got quite an extensive back catalogue of brochures and, and Renault knowledge. Also, like myself, a fellow uh, IAM member as well. Also, we've got some other cars here, such as this Morgan. It always throws me because I look at these and think that it's a uh, an older car, but in fact it's newer than my car, or indeed that Laguna that we've just had a look at. That's not the only Morgan here, though. We've got this, this nice green one as well, uh, which looks really nice. I do like that... Uh, Goodwood sticker in the window as well. And a very, very beige looking leather interior. <laughs> maybe if sports cars are not your thing, maybe something like a Ford Escort is the type of thing that does it for you. This one looks really, really nice, really clean. As you've probably gathered, though the car may look fairly standard, that Lotus engine probably is not. So we've also got some pre-war cars like this lovely Austin 7 here. I've been talking to the owner, Andrew, who uh, hopefully I'm going to get a little bit more of a closer look at this car at some point. Because I'll admit my pre-war car knowledge is pretty shambolic at best. But uh, yeah, this car looks in excellent condition as well. Sadly, um, a lot of the knowledge for these pre-war cars is dying off um, with younger people perhaps not taking as much interest in learning about these cars obviously cars are often fueled by nostalgia for us and uh, we're getting to the point now where even people's grandparents perhaps didn't have these cars and we've also got a morris 8 we've actually got some information here so it's a 1935 series one sliding head which does that does that relate to this top? Who knows? 
but uh, yeah, again, really, really nicely finished. It's, uh, both of these cars actually look in exceptionally good condition. Oh, I do like that as well. No signals. But have we even got trafficators? No, I can't even see trafficators on there. So must be hand signals. Probably a little bit more. Maybe not quite into my area, but a car I, I could actually see myself owning is something like this MGB GT. Again, this one does look exceptional. It looks really, really nice in uh, dark green with this beige leather interior as well. And again, this looks a really, really nice condition car. Obviously, we've got the... Um, club sticker in here as well and uh, Ross style alloys oh, well Ross style wheels aren't for alloy or pressed steel so yeah Ross styles racing green paint and chrome bumper really really nice example of these cars is that an MG a TC again my knowledge of cars this year is very 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 sketchy indeed I do have a die cast model at home of one of these because uh, it was a car that my grandfather actually uh, always wanted to own and sadly never did so something a little bit more modern is BMW 6 series And again, a <laughs> bit of a pattern emerging here, but most of the cars that we've seen in this line so far have been in exceptional condition. Not always the case at these shows, so that's a deregistration, which put us around 1986. Oh, look at that, we've got the twin lamps with wiper wash on both. Very posh. Of course, BMWs of this era were known for the um, crossbow alloy wheels as well. So what have we got? We've got a 635 CSI. Lots of information on there as well. So again, stepping back a little bit further, we've got an Austin. Um, not too good on these. What is it? A30, A35? A35. A35. Yep. Yes, viewers, so we have an Austin A35. Well, it looks like a very, very early Morris Minor. A few items for sale as well. And what else have we got in here? Very nice indeed. So Porsche 944. A car I really like. Obviously do look very similar to the 924 except we've got the uh, much wider stance with these arches on uh, on these cars. So again 944 especially like the red or white ones was one of the uh, poster cars of the 1980s. And this Ford Escort I do recall seeing quite recently at Walton um, again really really nice condition we've got some extra information in here as well and this paintwork I don't know how it's coming over on on camera but um, in the metal it looks absolutely fantastic it's sort of a apple green type color but in a metallic so I don't know if it's an original color uh, it certainly looks like it could be but uh, yeah exceptionally nice it's a 1300L, I'm not sure where that fits within the range. Um, 
Then we've even got a period radio in there on the uh, obligatory travel blanket. Oh, viewers, now a car that you may know by now will always um, get me excited. The Rover P5, not just a P5, but by the looks of those headlamps, the uh, twin stack, I imagine will be a P5B, meaning it's a V8. I really, really like these cars. Um, I have actually looked, I, I would love to own one. Uh, values are starting to creep now for, for quite a while. Um, they were really a bargain because people were going nuts for Mark II Jaguars. Um, and the P5 went somewhat under the radar, but to me, I think these are actually much classier. They were the preserve of, um, of uh, well, they were government cars. And even Her Majesty the Queen herself had a Rover P5B which can be seen in the uh, British Motor Museum at Gaydon. So yeah, it is a three and a half litre. So it's a P5B, which is the uh, Buick V8. So I'm guessing this is a Packard because it says so on top of that number plate. I'll be completely honest, I know nothing about these at all. But uh, this really is quite an eye-catching car. The, uh, again, I don't know how it's coming over on camera, but the paintwork is superb on, on this uh, vehicle. So we've even got what appears to be an additional seat back here. Really uh, something quite different. And what looks to be a fold down luggage rack at the back, but this really is a, a very large car. Uh, the interior, just look at these uh, gauges in this walnut. Incredible. Much as is this one as well. So where would you expect to see one of these, but to see two, really is incredible. And that engine almost looks lost in there. And we've got a couple of Rolls Royce as well. Uh, and the real showpiece of a car like this has to be those interiors. And look at the amount of space in the back of there. You're probably not getting all this with the reflection, but. Uh, yeah, there's a fair old amount of space in the back of there, and even the ashtrays have been chromed. So if a chrome ashtray isn't a sign of decadent luxury, then what is? But it was a different time. So, moving on from the Silver Shadow, we've got another Rolls Royce here. This one looks really, really nice. That definitely looks a comfortable place to be. And of course we've got us tray tables because nothing says luxury quite like a set of tray tables. And we've got this sort of large bench seat in the front separated by an armrest. And a rear view mirror which is mounted dash top. The uh, skill and craftsmanship that must have gone into these is incredible. And of course, along with the spirit of ecstasy, we've got our Union flag. And for such a small car show, Rolls-Royce definitely seems quite well represented here today. Because we've actually, this is the third of four that I can see just in this area. So coming a little bit, little bit more modern, you can see slight changes in uh, design here and, and an, an airbag steering wheel as well so we're uh, yeah definitely coming a little more up to date although in all honesty Rolls-Royce design um, was always more evolutionary rather than revolutionary so we've also got a silver shadow 2 in this lovely two-tone silver and blue colour And again, much of the same. Lots of wood, lots of leather. Lots of car. Wow, look at these. They've actually got headlamp wipers, but they've got brushes rather than a rubber blade. 
then of course that Rolls Royce grill. Probably hours of fabrication just goes into those grills alone. So it's only a little bit more modern with this Mercedes and a Ford Zodiac. Obviously one of the Z cars, we have the Zodiac uh, Zephyr and for some bizarre reason the other one escapes me. So moving on to the next row we have something a bit different here, we have the Simca 1204 Special. Lots of uh, interesting uh, literature and period accessories in here as well. It's always nice to see. But uh, yeah, stuff like this is really interesting. I don't think I've seen another one of these at a show. The Morris 8, by the look of it, this one, a much later one. Again, my knowledge of these are, uh, well, I wouldn't even call sketchy, it's nearer non existent. But again, lovely to see it here today. I like how they put the little uh, 8 in that badge there as well. Uh, Citroen 2CV, something I do know a little more about, although again, I wouldn't say a lot. Uh, this one being a uh, dolly, uh, a G registration, so we're talking 80, uh, 1989, so again, one of the later cars. Oh, we've got a period 1988 Road Atlas as well along with some other really interesting period accessories. So obviously the two CVs have gone through somewhat of a resurgence in recent years. Citroen AK, I think these are. Oh, just uh, something I do want to catch because I think it may actually be leaving and I haven't got round to that row yet. We've got um, driving around a Mark II Toyota and R2, a car I really like. By this point, it was up to a two litre engine. So a little larger than the uh, original Mark 1s, but uh, again, the car I remember very well from my youth, always wanted to own one. So that's a hard top with a sunroof. There was also a GTT bar, which was quite a popular model. We've got a very early three-door Range Rover. One of these actually did feature in my uh, video from the British Motor Museum at Gaydon. Uh, quite a rare vehicle now and uh, I would imagine quite sought after. <laughs> got a Triumph Toledo. So what we've got, 1976-1300. So again, some older vehicles again. So at the last show I went to, uh, I don't think there was as many cars from this era. Again, sadly, I can't really tell you anything about this because I don't know anything about them. But we can still have a good look anyway. I think that says Austin 16. Now, something that does look really interesting is this Morris van. Because... Uh, Looks like we've got some interesting uh, kit in the back of there as well. <laughs> so a 1970 MG Midget. <laughs> <laughs> So we've got another Jaguar here and this one is a rather special power plant because we've got a supercharged V8 under there. And then we've got an XJ, XJR8 4 litre short wheelbase. Uh, 
Actually, I had a work colleague who had a V8, but I don't think his was a supercharged one. And MX-5, it's always nice seeing MX-5, this being a, a Mark II. But uh, always nice to see an MX-5 at shows. Now, these couple of Cortinas we actually featured at the uh, from the show in Walton. So we've got a, uh, a state, which is an incredibly rare sight now. Well, as is a saloon, but perhaps the estate even more so. So again, we've got more pre-war cars. Another Morris 8. We've seen a few of these here today. Eight horsepower. Wow. Oh, that's quite handy, got all your tools are exactly where you need them. Do you think we get people now complaining when they've got cars with sort of 60 horsepower saying it's not enough? I suppose the cut and thrust of modern traffic things are a bit different now, but to think there was 8 horsepower. Look at this Rover Sports Saloon, 16 horsepower, 1945. Now I do like the old Rovers, of course. Uh, that, we've even got the Viking up on top, look. Rover always were the uh, prestigious mark. Really, really nice to see. Not going to look inside, there's actually someone sat in there. So uh, We've got... Um, wow, this is a, something a bit different as well. So we've got a supercharged Ford F-150 pickup truck. Strange, when you see these things stateside, they sort of look normal size, but when you see it next to a European car, they look absolutely enormous. Oh, another American car here, we've got a Chrysler 300C. I remember when these came out, um, styling really did sort of stand out on these. But obviously, you've got the uh, really angular lines of these, really muscular looking. Of course, the ones that we all wanted was the one with the uh, Hemi engine. This one's got the uh, Bentley style grille as well, which was quite a popular option on these. That's a lot of the cars that we got in Europe would have been diesel versions. So another, another MG midget. Car that did catch my eye earlier on is this Ford Cortina, um, mostly because of all the period accessories. So we've we've obviously got the fog lamps and the extra driving lamps on here, but we've even got things like this big track and the uh, penny board, the uh, cassette player, lots of old uh, period board games and accessories. I also really like the little lashes on the wipers and the uh, the shell sunstrip across the top and the roof rack. Of course, the period accessories don't end there, oh no, because this car has got the arm hanging out of the back. Now, when I was a kid, you used to go in your uh, motor accessory stores, and that was actually a pretty uh, common sight accessory. You used to also get the little magnetic fingers that you could stick on the um, edge of the boot lid. The idea being it looked like you've got a body in the boot. But uh, yeah, strangely, we don't see those anymore. And it's something I hadn't really realised had gone away. We've got the uh, big antenna out at the back of there as well. I don't know if that's a radio aerial or a CB antenna. But look at all these stickers as well. The Cortina sticker in there. And lots of other very interesting uh, stickers as well. Fat Willie's Surf Shack. Again, I used to see them all the time. And these stick on Garfields as well. Oh, and we've got our um, checked travel blanket in the back and a picnic set and the beaded seat cover. Oh, look at that. There's a cassette holder in there as well. Oh, this is fantastic. So we've got a um, period cassette holder and fire extinguisher there. And a, radio, a fairly period looking radio cassette as well. And the obligatory Rubik's Cube and the fluffy dice. In fact, not just fluffy dice, we've got a whole array of uh, stuffed toys in here. 
Oh, is that what I think it is in the back there as well? Look, show through glass. Oh, that's fantastic. <laughs> Does anything get more 1980s than one of those? It's brilliant. So moving on to the next row, we've got another American uh, a GMC pickup here. Um, obviously gone for the uh, rat look by the look of it here. Looking, uh, apart from those wheels which are incredibly shiny. Yeah, we've even got a big uh, exhaust coming out of the back. So what we've got, Chevy 3200. Oh, and I do like the Heinz uh, Beans emblem on the door as well. Really nice. So, another Morris Miner, this one being a convertible. Something again that's quite my ear is this uh, Nissan 100. So, in the 90s, of course, the Japanese had. Um, sports cars in pretty much every uh, size conceivable from little front wheel drive cars like this 100NX with its T-bar roof through to um, things like your 300ZX um, rear wheel drive sports car and everything in between but, uh, yeah really nice to see what looks like a fairly standard car as well again the for some reason the Japanese cars more than most seem to attract um, all the modifiers so finding original cars is getting incredibly difficult now. So we've got, uh, so we've already seen a few Rolls Royces, now we've got a Bentley. And just like the Rolls Royce we've got all the luxury but um, perhaps a little more under the bonnet. I do love that sign at the bottom, the uh, six and three quarter litre Brooklyn's. They could put 6.75, but no, six and three quarters. Now, you're very unlikely to ever find me at the wheel of something like a Bentley. Of course, my end of the market would have been, uh, well, had I been driving in the 1980s, may well have been something like this Mark II Fiesta XR2. Of course, these were all the rage, and again, they've got the uh, obligatory 1980s spot lamps. But uh, with its 1.6 litre engine, um, yeah, the, uh, these really were popular with, um, particularly with younger drivers. Of course, as they got older as well, they would have been quite popular with, um, with a lot of new drivers for their first or second cars, provided they could insure one, of course. Now, we've got the uh, uh, really the nice triumph here. here Again, not the first triumph we've seen also, today. Something a bit more modern for this uh, classic car show is actually a, uh, a Civic, but a uh, Jordan one. Now, I don't think this bodywork and tail lights and exhaust, in fact, I'm pretty certain. They are not standard, <laughs> but um, the Jordan model itself, um, yeah, I do actually remember those. Whether this is a genuine one or not, I couldn't tell you. Volvo P1800. Yep, sensible Volvo occasionally did do something that looked a little bit, uh, a little bit sexier, shall we say? Again, I don't know if this is the same one that was at uh, Walton quite recently. Oh. Actually, it's really, really nice. Volvo were generally always very sort of functional, but uh, those gauge clusters and that interior does actually look quite stylish. I like it very, very much indeed. Oh, but if it was a toss-up, well, I don't know. 
Rover P6 three and a half litre VAS. So it's like an earlier one by that grill, but uh, we've also got some scoops in the bonnet here. I have seen these on some models before. Of course, the P6 was um, a very technically advanced car in its day, with um, all-round disc brakes having inboard uh, discs at the rear, and the Didion suspension system. Um, apparently, they are prone to corrosion behind the front wheel here in this uh, bulkhead, sadly. But uh, the suspension design, of course, allowed for the V8, but was originally designed to maximise space in the engine bay for a gas turbine engine. If you want to see more on a uh, gas turbine model, then take a look at the video that I shot recently at uh, the British Motor Museum in Gaydon, where they've actually got a uh, Rover uh, T4, I think it was uh, designated, which was the uh, gas turbine um, model uh, pre-production model. So, moving on to something a little different now. Um, we have got a BMW 728i. So presumably, again, I don't really know BMW. I'm guessing this would have been the entry spec if there is any such thing in a 7 Series. Obviously, at the time that this was um, out, uh, a lot of everyday cars were very primitive compared to the cars that we have now. So even an entry spec model, by comparison, would have seemed extremely luxurious compared to the cars that most of us were driving. We've got another Citroen van. And a rather interesting display here as well. Another 2CV. So, 2CV6. I actually had an Auntie who had a 2CV6 special many years ago. Take it away. Come on, let's see if I see. And who doesn't love a picnic set? Which reminds me, um, we're now past lunchtime and I'm getting quite hungry. Ford Capri. Obviously, this one's got uh, quite a wide body on. So this one is uh, looks a fairly heavily modified Mark III. Oh, but it's not a normal Capri engine because Capris came with engines up to three litre. This one's got a 3.9 litre V8. So there we have it. <laughs> so yeah, that's a Capri that you'll uh, definitely stands out in the crowd. 1980, 87, 88, 89, uh, MG Metro. Uh, again, I think this may well be one I saw quite recently at another show. And it's got the uh, lattice alloys, not all of them had those. And it's somewhere on steel wheels. Uh, BMW M3 Triumph 2.5S in a state form. Very nice indeed, I do like that. And the window open so we can just see a little bit of that interior as well. Yes, it's great to be here at Netherton. And next to there we've got a uh, Ford Mustang. Again, you're unlikely to go to a classic car show and not see a Mustang these days. In fact, I was following another Mustang on the way here today, but uh, I think that's gone to one of the other many shows that are on today. So you can probably hear a lot of background noise. We've actually got some live music on here today as well. And bouncy castles and later on there's going to be a dog show and who doesn't love dogs unless maybe you're a cat person but this lovely little Austin
to Austin A40, so obviously looking quite a bit more modern than the A35 that we've already seen earlier on. Just strange, by the look of the shape, you kind of expect it to be a hatchback or a small estate, but uh, clearly not. Morris Minor, pick up. Uh, been utilised quite well as a tea shelf there, which I fully approve of. I do like this uh, 50s hot rod style um, sunshade over the front as well. Really nice. And lots of nice accessories here. I do like the uh, BMC drivers, but that's quite a nice little uh, badge on there as well. So another old Volvo. So again, an American, we've got a Corvette Stingray, which really stands out in this sort of coppery orange colour. And again, we've got a T-bar roof, means we can uh, get a nice view inside as well. It's really quite something. A car that does seem to have had a bit of a crowd around since I arrived is this... Uh, 1980, uh, 89 I would put that G registration, Peugeot 205 and looking at those wheels, let's check the badge as well, yes it is indeed a 1.9 GTI, obviously based on the facelift car and one of the quintessential hot hatches of the 1980s, in fact I think when Renault developed the Clio um, obviously we've got the 16 valve and then shortly after the Williams the 1.9 GTI 205 was the benchmark that, um, that the car was um, intended to go up against and strange it actually looks completely dwarfed against the car that it's parked next to because uh, this Cadillac's absolutely enormous as old Cadillacs generally were incredible and I, I do love that uh, sort this of dish steering wheel and those big bench seats as well and the fins on the back and from a Cadillac to a Hillman Imp I do quite like a Hillman Imp I actually got a friend who's uh, who had an Imp with a five-cylinder Volvo engine in the back which he sadly no longer owns, but uh, imps do seem to have a following. You do get quite a lot of modified imps as well. So obviously this one has got some bucket seats in there, but compared to uh, some of the cars I've seen, it does look um, fairly standard. And another chrome bumper MGB, this time a roadster, again in green and again with a beige leather interior. On oh, a lovely walnut dash as well. Of course, when you think British sports car, this pretty much is the image that springs to mind. And again, going back a little older again, we've got this fantastic Alvis, which uh, has such presence with that grille and those huge, huge headlamps on there as well. Oh, uh, this uh, fantastic straight six engine there as well. Oh, and we've got suicide doors, look. Suicide doors. It's fantastic wood capping on top as well. Very nice indeed. But, uh, Duncan, who I was chatting to earlier with his Fiat 500F. Now this is actually a car you may have seen before because it featured on uh, Car SOS. Um, a few seasons ago 
obviously the 500F uh, was sort of in the middle of the production I think on those originally um, we had the cars with the suicide doors and the longer fabric roof um, of course the later cars were the Lusso which tended to have overriders and the um, long strip um, speedometer this has still got the older uh, round speedometer but this car looks absolutely fantastic inside and out and uh, as you would expect the uh, the work that was uh, done by Fuzz on Car SOS that really has stood up well. And look at this. Superb. We'll try and get around these last few quickly because my battery is actually starting to, uh, I've just been notified the battery is running low on the phone I'm filming with. So we're going to have to pick this up a little bit. There's not many left now to view. So we've got yet another Rolls Royce. Obviously this one uh, being a very, very early one by the looks of it. Austin 1300. Lots of black vinyl in there. And wood veneer. Keeping that one company, we've got this lovely MG. <laughs> so, it seems to be getting a bit busy around here now, and look, we've got all these dogs, so presumably this may be where the dog show is about to take place. So I think that about wraps things up here for today. But uh, yeah, another thoroughly enjoyable day out. And we'll hope to catch up with you in the next video, um, whichever that may be. I'm trying to think what events we've got coming up now. I'm not sure what the next video is going to be. Or it might be something different. It could be a road test review, perhaps. So with everything uh, covered now and the dog show looking like it's about to start some point soon, I think it's almost time to draw this one to a close. Now, if you have enjoyed this video, please do hit the like uh, button. Also, if you haven't already, please do consider subscribing. Um, that way you won't miss any of the videos that uh, are still to come. And it does also help the uh, channel to grow as well. The... Um, I did actually have a look the other night and I think about 90% of all the viewers on recent videos have actually not been subscribers. Um, so like I say, please do consider subscribing. It doesn't cost you anything to do so. Uh, until next time, look after yourself, stay safe and goodbye from me for now.